What's going on top 10 nerd family and welcome back. Love is in the air. I mean in, in comic books, definitely not right now. No one's, no one's talking right now. But that includes super villains as well. They need love, okay? They have feelings too. A little darker and maniacal, but there's still feelings nonetheless. So when it comes to relationships, we gotta look at some super villains too. Either they date other villains, or sometimes they even date one of our beloved superheroes for a hot minute. Whatever the case is, there's a lot of love to go around. So here to count down 10 of our strangest villain couples, I'm Taylor McWaters, you're you. Let's dive in. Kicking off the list at number 10. Dr. Doom and Emma Frost. The White Queen of the Hellfire Club. Starting off as an enemy to the X-Men, but an accident changed her ways. And eventually she became a co-headmaster of Xavier's school for gifted youngsters, training the last generation of mutants, Generation X. So she could transform her body into diamonds, which makes her extremely tough, both on the outside and the inside. And as for Dr. Doom, well, he was her boy toy while she still reigned as the White Queen. Their powers complemented each other so well, and then on Earth 807-128, the two of them were presumably married. Holy matrimony, we love to see it. Starting off the list with some nice marriage stuff, there we go. And before we continue on to number nine, if you guys could go ahead and give us a thumbs up, just a little quick like, because it goes a long way for us over here. You guys are the best, thank you so much for your support. Back to the list. Number nine, She-Hulk and Juggernaut. Shifting over now to Uncanny X-Men 435, titled The Trial of Juggernaut. I mean, it's standard practice to not hook up with your clients, right? Like if I have a job and then I'm helping somebody, like say, I don't know, if I'm a lawyer, I shouldn't want to hook up with who I'm representing because I would get fired, right? So when Jennifer Walters represented Juggernaut and in a moment of heroic actions, Juggernaut kind of proves that he's not the worst guy in the world. I mean, he saves a guard from his own wrath. He was gonna kill him, but he's like, you know what? Get out of here. You're too cool, get out of here. Happy Boxing Day, get, a, get going, get going now. Yeah, he just let him go, and then he didn't even bother trying to escape. So Jen Walters is like, huh, interesting. Is this the juggernaut we all know? Why is he like this? Is this a scam? Why did you escape, sir? What's going on? And he's like, I don't know, man. My dad did some rocket scientist stuff. I feel like I've always been a failure. I don't know, women's rights are the best. Let's hook up. And then Jen is now seeing the soft side of juggernaut and she's interested, all right? She can read people, that's her job. So she's like, okay, there's more to this guy than meets the eye. Okay, then the next page, the room's a mess. They've hooked up. They had one hell of a one night stand, literally breaking their nightstand in the meantime. I mean, the bed's broken into the ground, the lamp's busted, the window's open. It's like they wanna watch, so you know what? Freaky or not, it's still, it's still a romance. We won't judge. Number eight, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. Okay, this one we might judge a little bit. One of you guys referred to this as Twincest in our last video, so I had to kinda take that and put it in my pocket and now bring it back to life because it's an amazing term and I'm gonna use it forever. So here it is, Twincest. I'm referring now to the Ultimate X-Men series. Now, I know when it comes to villains, these two aren't the worst of the worst, but in this case, they're siblings and they're together, which is kind of the worst. Now, I know when it comes to villains, these two aren't like the worst of the worst. I mean, in this case, they're siblings, so they're naturally close. They're together, like a bit too much together. So I have to mention them in this story. So since they were a big deal in the Brotherhood, they were very dedicated to the cause. I mean, a little too dedicated at times. Because we first meet the pair in X-Men issue four, and then right off the bat, we see Quicksilver defending his sister, like a little bit too much. Because Toad is chewing his food too loudly, Quicksilver's like, ugh, my sister's right there, you obnoxious fool. And then in 2001, the pair were in Ultimates, and then that's when we see this connection, but it's a little bit more connected. Oh, it's so gross to talk about. So the Ultimates issue had a front cover that made readers do a quick double take with the duo side by side, hand in hand. And not even like the first date hand holding either, like their fingers were interlocked, like they were like, Got that sweaty grip, you know? It was a subtle note, but one that has lived rent free in our brains ever since. Number seven, Norman Osborn and Gwen Stacy. Another gross one, coming at ya. Norman Osborn, who we all know as the menacing green goblin, one of, if not, Spider-Man's biggest foe. So when we revisit the Sins Past storyline, it comes with a shock that it's revealed that Norman and Gwen Stacy were a thing before he killed her. Yeah, villains are weird, I don't know. How did this happen, you ask? Well, it was revealed that before her death, the two of them had an affair, and if that's not bad enough, they even had some kids on the low, some sneaky little kids. Twins too, ironically. 
This story is crazy. Spider-Man ends up fighting the twins. All the while, he has to deal with Gwen Stacy being dead, and now this new information's in his brain, and he's fighting his own twins, but it's not his twins, it's Norman's twins. Honestly, I felt bad for Peter a lot. This guy goes through the worst time ever. Number six, Magneto and Mystique. So in the comics, Magneto is a smooth talking metal moving man. He dates other villains like Rogue or Scarlet Witch, but in the Fox movies, we see a new relationship with Mystique. Jennifer Lawrence and Michael Fassbender, I mean, probably the most attractive couple on the planet. Oh God. But by the time we get to X-Men Apocalypse, the two of them have a lot in common. See, they both would do anything to defend mutants. That's their whole deal. That's what makes them kind of evil. They even bond over the fact that Magneto prefers the real her. It's become a huge meme where he's like, I'm talking about the real you. And then it shows like her all blue scaly things and he's like, perfection. There we go. The mutant look. So off the bat, I'm sure she's a fan of his respect for mutant rights. Because in X-Men First Class, everybody else close to Mystique wanted her to hide her true self. They were like, ew, put on a sweater or look like Jennifer Lawrence, something better. So when somebody says, hey, be you and only you, it's truly beautiful. I mean, it's kind of hard not to develop feelings. And then in Days of Future Past, there of course wasn't too much going on between them. I mean, that tends to happen when you shoot at somebody with the intention of killing them. What are you, OJ? Get out of here. Number five, Iron Man and Madam Mask. Now, in the comics, it is no surprise Tony has a long list of lovers. Long. I mean, his charm, his smarts, his everything, you know. The first time we see Tony in the MCU, he's bringing over reporters for one night stands. This is classic Tony Stark. So him and Madam Mask, AKA Whitney Frost, were actually seeing each other for a hot minute and they got so close that they even knew each other's secret identity. Wild, right? So Tony just loves dating villains. That's his thing. He's like, hey, you could ruin my life. It all started when Tony showed concern over her face and not in the usual way either. Like he saw through the scars, which is a great message. It's not always about looks, unless you're Jennifer Lawrence. You can't keep saying that, it's so stupid. Things got to a point where Madame Mask had to pick between Iron Man and her father and it wasn't an easy task. Now they're still close, they're just not that close anymore. Classic villain stuff. Number four, Joker and Harley Quinn. Making her first appearance in the animated series, Harleen Quinzel, most commonly seen as the Joker's love life and twisted partner in crime, started off as an intern psychiatrist at Arkham Asylum, and then in the 1994 graphic novel, The Batman Adventures, Mad Love, we see Harleen's origin play out. So Dr. Harleen Francis Quinzel started to fall in love with the madman as the days went by. And it's an amazing graphic novel. It actually won the Eisner and Harvey Awards for best single issue comic of the year. So if you haven't read it, you know what you're doing right after this video ends. You're welcome. She becomes intrigued with how the Joker's mind works. She volunteers to help treat him. After helping him escape numerous times, it is no surprise that she became his sidekick and lover donning a gesture suit of her own. They're just a bad couple. One of those couples you see in public and you're like, I bet they fight a lot. I bet they fight a lot about stupid shit, for sure. Number three, Scarlet Witch and Doctor Doom. Our man Doom at it again. Okay, we look over now to the Avengers, the Children's Crusade miniseries, where we have the young Avengers looking for Wanda because her son Wiccan started experiencing reality altering powers just like Wanda. So he wanted to check in with Wanda to make sure that, you know, reality itself hasn't shifted or anything colossal. So he found out that she was being held at Doom Castle. So after a quick rescue trip, he discovers her and Doom in matching colors. Something's different, they look kind of good. And she's planning on marrying Doom. Ooh. And she doesn't even remember her origin or anything at all. It's just a nightmare. All she knows is that she's in love with Dr. Doom. So Wiccan tries the obvious, right? He's like, hey, you're Scarlet Witch. You married Vision. You have two kids. You thought they were dead, but they're actually. And before Wiccan can even finish telling Wanda that they're indeed alive, Doom steps in to shut him up. Doom's like, eh, I'm not out of that guy. We got a big wedding tomorrow. We should get some sleep. No, I think, I don't know. The Avengers, the Children's Crusade issues one to nine are super fun. You gotta check it out. We love red weddings. Number two, Thanos and death. So in the MCU, Thanos wanted to bring balance to the universe. Too many mouths to feed, not enough to go around, or something like that. That was his main goal. He wants the stones for this reason. The comics were a bit more complicated. See, Thanos has always been infatuated over death, 
Lady Death, that is. She has all the knowledge of the universe. I mean, she's kind of a catch, can't lie. Thanos, being a titan, can absorb cosmic energy and then project it. He's a fan of these types of entities. And what better way of getting her attention than wiping out half of all life in the universe? Now, this is a wild couple. Lady Death hasn't even spoken one word to Thanos. She much prefers to send her minions to deliver messages. It's kind of like in class when you're like, hey, can you tell Brittany to tell Beth, to tell Amber, to tell Rachel that I kind of like her? And they're like, you got it. We'll get back to you in one week. You know, the cosmic version of playing hard to get. And then when this happens, people start to get desperate for attention. So desperate that Thanos created a female Titan just to make death jealous. Taraxia has entered the chat. And she's just a big ball of fun, you know? I'm actually a big fan of how she rips Iron Man's head off. That's really... Yeah, you gotta pick them, you gotta pick them well. One of the most interesting parts of this relationship with the two is the entity created called Rot. So when Thanos died, his energy merged with deaths, creating this moving void of nothingness. It was both alive and dead at the same time. It was like this weird offspring. So death couldn't even sense it. God, Thanos really knows how to pick them. And finally, number one, my personal favorite, Bane and Talia al Ghul. The Dark Knight Rises was an epic conclusion to the Nolan Bat trilogy. We have Bane mumbling a bunch, doing some football pep talks and breaking backs, and his love interest in the film is revealed to be Talia al Ghul later on. It's a nice big twist, we love it. Talia was brought up by her father, of course being Ra's al Ghul, and was trained to be the second in command for the League of Assassins, or League of Shadows. So Ra's big plan was to get Talia to marry Bruce Wayne, so that there's a worthy male heir afterwards, right? And then in The Dark Knight Rises, she disguises herself as Miranda Tate, and Marion Cotillard did a great job playing her, such a good actor. And it was a nice moment to see on screen, okay? So after Bruce escaped from the pit and returned to Gotham with the intent to stop Bane and save the city, and then as Catwoman says, oh, you're gonna wage a war to save your stuck-up girlfriend? Batman's like, yes. Absolutely. You definitely. Most definitely. I've thought about it every night. He's like, yeah, I got this. My back's good. Aim for the mask. You know, pull some pipes out. We're good. Nope. Miranda stabs Batman then, revealing her true identity. Then the audience plays a little bit of catch up, revealing that Bane was her protector and that he loved her. Oh, love it. That plus Talia slash Miranda hooking up with Batman. I can see where the anger comes from. It doesn't come out of nowhere, you know? And hey, the best way to fight jealousy is to break backs. And that's just facts. Taylor McGuire's. Well guys, there you have it. Which of these weird villain couples are your favorites to watch? I know there's a lot of evil romances floating around out there, so I'm sure we'll be back for a part two. And in the meantime, stay home, stay safe, keep reading comics. I'm Taylor McWatters, you're you, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Hey, he's like, oh, Scarlet Witch, like, looking good. Ah, we're recording, there you go. Fire, guys, that's it. They're like, we don't even need to tell you why you're fired. Just watch this seven second clip of you talking about all right, here we go. On that note, <coughs> air Taylor, air, breathe. There we go. Number nine, seven, Shield gal. I like to mix it up and I just put myself up. So no. Also, sorry for just blowing your eardrums, editors. Like when you're in a fight with someone, you're holding their hands, you're like, ah, I hate you. Don't let go of me, there we go. It's gross, so gross. Oh, this one's even grosser. So in the comics, Magneto clapped my hands. I'm like, hmm. Like a mouthwash commercial. I'm like, oh my god, my lips are wet. I love her, he says with the voice crack. I'm in love. It sounds like that misfit toy. It's Santa. Oh my god. I want to keep that kind of, but I don't.